Standing on the dock here now with Mike Sanderson and Stu Benentine. Mike, you are the tactician on board Comanche for the 75th Rolex Sydney to Hobart. How many times have you actually done this race now? Well, actually not very many at all. I'll be honest, I've avoided it for 10 years um, while I've uh, had little kids. So, uh, But it's great to be back. It's the 75th. It's such an iconic race. Um, I really enjoy these 600 mile races, especially on these fast boats because it's basically a sprint for a couple of days. Um, and it really is one of the tougher lengths of race because you, you, you've pretty much got to sprint it. You can't get into a watch system properly. You can't, uh, you know, it's not a day race obviously, so it's a really tough length physically. So if you can't get into a watch system, what does a watch captain do then, Stu mm -hmm. Valentine? Pretty much just mm -hmm. trying to carry out the, the orders of the tactician. Yeah, yeah. if only. <laughs> yeah, so the watch captains are generally tasked with the responsibility of trying to execute the plan. And that means managing the, the sail trim and the drivers and the modes that we're sailing to try and achieve the goals that, you know, Mike and Stan and Navigator have come up with. So I have a question for both of you then. Uh, you know, Comanche is definitely going out there to win, but can you just explain to us why Wild Oats is such a hard boat to beat? Yeah, I mean, the, the Sydney Hobart race is, is, you know, it's quite a different race course. And, you know, even though it's point to point, it's definitely divided up historically into segments. And, you know, there's often a, a you know, a VMG running, so a true run downwind, and there's often a true upwind. Um, and then, you know, there's this, very tricky ending of um, finishing up the Derwent River into Hobart. As these boats have got faster, just purely by coincidence, the time that they finish is probably the worst time of the day to be entering the Derwent River. You know, it's in the hours of darkness, it's just after the sea breeze has shut off and it's before, you know, any morning breeze has been able to establish. Um, so it's, you know, it's really a bad time. So Comanche often has led into Storm Bay um, against Wild Oats and often been passed in the Derwent even, um, or, or certainly in the last 100 miles um, into Hobart. So it, it makes it tough. Um, but, you know, we've got four, five Super Maxis in the race. And, um, you know, so we've you know, it's going to be a horses for courses depending on what we get. So Stu, isn't it uh, up to the tactician to make the best call then going up the Derwin? I just heard a few excuses there, how about you? Yeah, as Mike said, the Derwin can be a very, very tricky place and, you know, because the boats are so different, we have to make sure that we sail our boat to its strengths. And, you know, if the conditions suit Comanche, we'll be pushing really, really hard. Even if we have a good advantage, we know that we've got to push really, really hard because it'll undoubtedly it'll come down to those last few miles in the Derwin. So when you actually go down to sail selection for those challenging uh, parts of the race, how do you make those decisions on which one to actually put up? Well luckily, you know, we we all agree as an afterguard, you know, with, you know, chatting to Jim Cooney, the skipper, you know, we all agree that we need a very rounded boat for this race. I mean, who knows what you're going to get. You know, it's summer, summertime in the southern hemisphere and, you know, we've got this mixture of gradient breeze and then sea breezes and, and, and you know, you really can have anything. So we've got to take a, a, a rounded inventory that we can pretty much handle whatever gets thrown at us. Is there a preferred sail that you have that you just like to pull out of the bag just to put up, Stu? <laughs> no, I think, you know, Comanche, we're pretty happy if we've got smaller sails on. It means there's plenty of breeze mm -hmm. and the boat's nicely powered up and that's where hopefully we've got a nice advantage. Fantastic. Well, I mean, between the two of you, you've done a lot of miles and this is just a, an overnight race, but you're on for every waking minute really though, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. It, it is genuinely a sprint. We'll be putting our heads down uh, when we can. The, the, the hard part when you're in either a skipper or a tactician or a watch captain's position is your chance to put your head down is when it's pleasant. And so we're awake for all the awful bits and all the tricky bits. And if it ever gets pleasant at any stage, that's our chance to put our heads down. And um, so yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a pretty gruelling few days, but uh, you know, it's pretty rewarding if we can get this boat to the finish first. Are there any secret weapons on board? No, I think, you know, one thing that is consistent the way that Jim 
Kearney has campaigned this boat is that it's a really top level crew with a lot of depth. So, you know, we can be pretty confident that the boat's going to be sailed as close to 100% of its potential all the time. Well, there you go, you heard it there, 100% of the time. <laughs> Alright guys, well, hey, well thanks so much. There's a lot of work to still be done before the start of the race. Best of luck. Thanks very much. Thanks.